welcome to my kitchen. My name is Sherry, and today we're talking all about kitchen substitutes. But before I get started, let me just say, if this is your first time here, you love food, you love fun, you are in the right spot, go ahead and hit the subscribe button as well as the notification bell so you don't miss anything new. All right, so a couple weeks ago, I showed you all how you can make your own powdered sugar, and I also showed you how you can make your own brown sugar. So with us going to the store less and less because of the stay at home order, I thought it'd be a great time also to show you how you can just use other things around your kitchen as substitutes if you happen to be, you know, you're in the middle of a recipe and you realize, oh shoot, I don't have that, which has happened to me a couple times in the, in the last few weeks. And I thought it was great. I did those videos and there were quite a few comments on there of people saying, Wow, that's interesting. I didn't know that. So hopefully people will find this uh, very handy and helpful. So the first one I'm going to do is, and I just wrote all these down, and I'm actually going to put these in the description so you don't need to take notes or anything. I just kind of wanted to go over them and talk about them a little bit. Um, just talk about the way that I use them in recipes and things. So the first one is a teaspoon of baking powder. So if you don't have baking powder on hand, you can use a quarter teaspoon of cream of tartar and half a teaspoon of baking soda, and that can substitute for your baking powder. I showed you how to do the brown sugar. I showed you how to do the powdered sugar. If you need an ounce of unsweetened chocolate, you can use four tablespoons of cocoa powder and one tablespoon of butter. Um, and... If you need cocoa, like an ounce of cocoa, you can also just substitute an ounce of chocolate for that. Unsalted butter. So a lot of your recipes will call for salted butter versus unsalted butter. I pretty much only use salted butter because <laughs> that's the flavor that I like. So a lot of times, you know, you're making chocolate chip cookies and you'll see it'll ask you to add like, you know, a quarter of a teaspoon of salt or half a teaspoon of salt. And it really just brings out the flavor in your food. And I also like, you know, how you see like the caramels, the sea salt caramel. So I, when even when I'm doing baking, I like that little bit of salt in there. So, I mean, that's just a personal preference for me. Um, but, you know, <laughs> I probably really shouldn't because I have the high blood pressure. But if you need a cup of unsalted butter, you can substitute for a cup of shortening. Um, a half a teaspoon of cream of tartar, you can uh, substitute for a teaspoon of lemon juice or a teaspoon of white vinegar. Um, if you don't have any lemon juice, you can substitute for vinegar. Um, a lot of times it's asking you to put lemon juice in there. It's going to do that not only for the acidity, but for the flavor. And because the vinegar is so much more um, pungent, you're going to want to cut back on that. So for every teaspoon of lemon juice, you're going to only want to use a half a teaspoon of vinegar. Soy sauce. So a lot of times I say if you need soy sauce, I think it is um, a little bit of Worcestershire with a little bit of water. But basically what I do, and this is the reason I can't remember it, is I just kind of use those interchangeably. I think they taste very similar. They're both very salty. And so I just, you know, if I'm going to make something that calls for soy sauce, I don't have it on hand, I'll use the Worcestershire and vice versa. Um, buttermilk. So buttermilk's really simple. If you don't have buttermilk on hand, you just take a cup of regular milk and you add about a tablespoon of vinegar to it. And then you just let it sit on the counter for, you know, 10, 15 minutes and it'll thicken up and it'll almost become just like buttermilk. And then that's what you can use in your recipes. Um, red wine and white wine. So if you have a recipe that's calling for red wine, you're going to want to use a uh, beef stock. And if you have something that's calling for a white wine, you're going to want to use a chicken stock. So in a lot of these um, substitutions, they go back and forth you know so if you didn't have the shortening you could possibly use the butter um, and that sort of thing this is one of those things though you're not going to want to if it's calling for a cup of beef stock you're not going to want to throw a cup of wine in there but yeah you can definitely substitute the stock for the wine so beef in place of red and the chicken in place of white um, if you don't have any milk on hand I know that I always have like cans of evaporated milk for when I do, you know, baking and stuff like that. I usually have those downstairs. Um, and because of everything that's going on right now, I actually have several cans. But if you don't have any regular milk on hand, you can use a half a cup of evaporated milk and a half a cup of water. So basically, it's just half and half. So if you're going to use a full can, um, you can just mix that with a full can of water and then measure out what you need as far as your milk goes. Yogurt. Um, I kind of feel like yogurt, sour cream, and buttermilk, they're all interchangeable. It doesn't really matter what recipe you're using. If you're making a dip or whatever it may be, if you're going to bake with it, um, I feel like you can substitute buttermilk for sour cream and sour cream for yogurt. And I feel like all three of those kind of go hand in hand. And another thing is a lot of times if I'm doing a dip and I want to make it like a little 
um, a little healthier, I guess I would say. Instead of using all the mayonnaise, sometimes I'll substitute it out with yogurt. Sometimes I'll substitute it out with sour cream. Very seldom will I use buttermilk. Um, and even in a lot of my recipes, like my tuna salad I do this with, instead of using a full mayonnaise, I'll use half mayonnaise and half like a light sour cream or something like that. But I really do feel like all three of those, just you can kind of interchange those, the yogurt, sour cream, and buttermilk. Um, butter, as far as butter goes, in cooking, a lot of times you can just substitute oil and it's going to be just fine. Now, it doesn't go the other way around because of the smoke point is a lot different. Um, but definitely, if you're cooking with butter, you can substitute with oil. And if you're baking with butter, you can substitute with applesauce. So if it calls for a half a cup of butter, you can put in a half a cup of applesauce. And if you guys have seen me do my two ingredient cakes, um, I've done cakes where you just take a box cake mix and you mix in, you know, a can of mandarin oranges. Or um, I actually use, I'll show you, I use this quite a bit. So you've probably seen me use my rock crock before, but I will actually just mix the cake in here. I don't even dirty up another dish. I take a box cake mix, I throw it in here with a can of soda, and that's it. I stir it up, and then I take a tub of frosting, and I drop it by teaspoonfuls on top. This goes in the microwave with the lid on it, 10 minutes, and you have got a gooey lava cake. And then, of course, I always make a little bit of homemade whipped cream or serve it with some ice cream. But people are just blown away at the fact I can do a cake in here in 10 minutes. <laughs> And it just comes out perfect. But again, you can do that um, if you, you know, and I think Weight Watchers does this too, like, you know, put in a can of diet soda. So anyway, you can do that. Um, also, when it comes to your cakes, if it calls for self rising flour, um, you can make your own self rising flour. Basically, I think a lot of people don't know the difference. I've, I've heard even, um, you know, especially the newer cooks that are coming into the kitchen, the younger, the younger cooks, but even people my age, I hear say, you know, I didn't know what AP flour was. So if you see something abbreviated, AP, that is for all-purpose flour. Um, and if you see uh, something that's SR, that is self-rising. And then you also have cake flour, which I don't keep cake flour on hand. There is a little bit of a difference, but I find it's easier just to kind of make my own. And the same with the self-rising flour. Um, I actually do keep that on hand because I like to do things. And there's a video out there. I'll put this in the description as well. But I have a video with three ingredients for your um, buttermilk biscuits. And it's really just um, buttermilk self-rising flour is it butter i don't know <laughs> i'll put it in the i'll put it in the description um but in place of your self-rising flour you can just take a cup of flour and two teaspoons of baking powder mix that together and maybe like a half a teaspoon of salt or whatever and you're going to have self-rising flour um cake flour the difference between cake flour and regular flour is it's a little bit finer so it's a little bit lighter and the gluten is not as high or the protein so the, the cakes, it's like perfect for um, like angel food cakes and that sort of thing. But it is something that I don't keep on hand. Um, what I usually do is just take a cup of, if it calls for cake flour, I take a cup of all-purpose flour and I just take out two tablespoons. Now, I have seen recipes or um, substitutions where when you take that two tablespoons of flour out, you substitute that with cornstarch and you put two tablespoons of cornstarch in. I don't do that. I just take the all-purpose flour and just take out a couple of tablespoons and that's what I use for my cake flour. Um, breadcrumbs. Breadcrumbs, I just make those myself. I talked about this before. We get down to the end of the loaf and nobody eats those ends of the bread. So, I I always save the first one and the last one versus tossing it. Sometimes I toss it in the yard for the birds, but a lot of times I just toss those all in one bag. I keep it in the freezer, and when that bag gets full, I take it out and I either make breadcrumbs or I make croutons. And to make the breadcrumbs, I just throw those in a food processor and give it a whirl, and you've got breadcrumbs in no time. And I, sometimes I dry that out first, depending on if I'm going to use it right away or if I'm going to freeze it. If I'm going to freeze it, I make sure that I dry the, you know, I toast the bread and then I make the breadcrumbs. If I'm using it right away, though, sometimes I just um, throw it right in the food processor and add it to my meatloaf or whatever the recipe may be. Um, the other thing, like I said, I did croutons, and that's another one. I have to write these down so I don't forget. <laughs> We're going to do the croutons and we're going to do the biscuits. I'm going to put both of those in the description below. But as far as the croutons go, the croutons, I do those right in the air fryer. And I find of all the things you could cook croutons in or make croutons, I've seen them deep fried in the oven, um, on the pan, you know, on top of the stove. I really think the air fryer is the best way to make croutons because, you know, if you lay them out on a cookie sheet, you've got to go back in and you got to turn them over and toss them around and keep moving. In the air fryer, I just take my basket out, give it a shake and put it back in. And I mean, they're done in, in less than 10 minutes and they're, they're just perfect. So um, ricotta cheese, maybe you're making a lasagna or uh, maybe some stuffed shell, something that calls for ricotta cheese. I find that cottage cheese is a good 
good substitute for that. And then the last one I have, and um, this hasn't happened, this has happened quite a bit in the wintertime. I find myself where I don't have any allspice, and you can actually use one part cloves to two parts of cinnamon in place of your allspice. So, and you know, there are a lot of other kitchen substitutes out there. So if you find yourself where you, you're, you know, you're in the middle of a recipe and you don't have what it calls for, just Google it because there really are so many things that you can substitute. So I hope this comes in handy for y'all, and I thank you so much for watching. I'll see you next Tuesday with another tip. Bye.